Hi, my name is Heinrich. Today we're going to talk about redox reactions. So redox reactions are reactions where there is a transfer of electrons from one substance to the other. So you have a substance A which might have a surplus of electrons or might be neutrally charged but some of its electrons gets transferred to substance B. So substance A loses some electrons and substance B gains some electrons. So redox reactions. The red stands for reduction and the yellow, the ox, stands for oxidation. Now there's a ship that can help us remember what redox reactions are and that is oil rig. So oil rig stands for oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. Loss of what? Gain of what? Electrons. So redox reactions are where one thing loses electrons and the other thing gains electrons. So oxidation is where a substance has some electrons and it loses it. Oxidation is loss and reduction is where a substance doesn't have the electrons at once and it gains electrons from somewhere else usually. So let's look at agents. What is an agent? An agent is somebody who is charged with doing something. They're given a task. They, they do things. They're doers. So oxidizing agents are things that do oxidizing. They go to another substance and they cause oxidation to happen. So they themselves undergo reduction. Reducing agents again go to other substances and they cause reduction to happen in the other substance. So they themselves undergo oxidation. Let's look at writing half reactions. So there we've got a reaction. We've got a zinc atom that reacts with a copper ion to form copper and a zinc ion. So the oxidation half reaction is simply the story, the little tale of where oxidation took place. So in this reaction, zinc underwent oxidation because zinc went from an atom to a positively charged ion. So go to, going from neutral to positively charged means you must have lost electrons. Similarly, the reduction half reaction is again the little story about where reduction took place. It's our little tale of reduction. So here the reduction story is we had some copper ions, Cu2+, that gained electrons in order to form the copper atom. So if you go from a positively charged ion to neutral, that means you must have gained electrons. And similarly there, we can see that the oxidation half reaction means that zinc underwent oxidation. And remember, when you undergo oxidation, you were the reducing agent. So zinc there was the reducing agent and that copper iron was the oxidizing agent because it underwent reduction. So let's see what happens when we do it the other way around. So we have two half reactions and we want to find the overall reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to balance the electrons on both sides of the half reaction and then we're simply going to add up the two half reactions in order to get the overall reaction. And if our electrons are balanced, everything else in the two half reactions is automatic, automatically going to be balanced as well. Let's have a look. So we have the lithium half reaction there and the lead half reaction and we see the lead half reaction has two electrons on the left and the lithium only has one electron on the right. So we've got to go balance that. So we pop a two in front of our electron there. Right, then in order to obtain two electrons from the lithium, we need two lithium ions and two lithium atoms, right? What you do to one, you've got to do to all of them. 
And now we're simply going to add them up. So lead was the same. We have two electrons there. We have two lithium ions and we've got uh, two lithium atoms. We've got two lithium ions. Lead is still just one thing there. And we've got two electrons. Right, so we can see the number of electrons on the left is the same as the number of electrons on the right. And then simply all we're going to do is write that equation we've got there as the final equation, but we're going to leave out electrons in our final answer. So again, we now had two lithium ions and two lithium atoms which reacted with one lead ion and one lead atom. Right, now we come on to spontaneous reactions. So what are spontaneous reactions? They're reactions that happen without the input of energy. When you put the two substances together, they play nicely and you just get a result. You don't have to ask them, you don't have to beg them, they just do it. Non-spontaneous reactions are when you put two substance together, substances together and they don't play nicely, they don't want to get along, they don't want to react. So you've got to input energy in order to get this reaction to happen. So we use the table of standard reduction potentials in order to find out is something going to be a spontaneous reaction or not a spontaneous reaction. So there we've got a snippet from our standard reduction potentials table and we're going to see now how to use it. So reduction, right, is again the gain of electrons. So when we move from the left side of this table to the right side of this table, we are gaining electrons, right, as you can see. And these are all reversible reactions. So you can go left to right and right to left. Both reactions are possible. When you start on the right of the table and you go towards the left, you've got oxidation. You've got the loss of electrons. Then, moving upwards on the table, there's an increasing reducing ability. So things that are higher on the table are better at causing reduction to happen in other substances. So they themselves really want to undergo oxidation. They want to make other things undergo reduction and they want to themselves undergo oxidation. On the other side, the lower we go on the table, we've got increasing oxidizing ability. So the lower you go, these things really want to go and cause oxidation to happen. And they themselves really, really want to undergo reduction. So spontaneous reactions happen when the things that want to do the reducing does the reducing and the thing that wants to do the oxidizing does the oxidizing. So spontaneous reactions happen when the reactions do what they want to do. So if I want you to do something and you want to do it, you're going to spontaneously do it. But if you don't want to do something and I want you to do it, I've got to coax you, I've got to beg you, I've got to give you energy in order to do what you don't want to do. And that's a non-spontaneous reaction. So let's see how to use this table a little bit more easily, if we can get a, a little shortcut. Right, so we've got a, a reaction there, it's cobalt that's reacting with a lead ion to form lead and a cobalt ion. So let's start with the cobalt, we see we go from a atom to an positively charged iron, which means that we underwent oxidation. Oxidation is loss, right? So we find our reaction on the table and we draw an arrow in the direction that the reaction happened. So we started with cobalt and we ended with a cobalt iron. We go right to left. We do the same for lead. We see we had a lead iron and that turned into a lead atom. So it went from a positive charge to a neutral charge. So that was reduction. Reduction is gain. So the lead iron gained electrons and we go find that on the table as well. And again, we draw an arrow in the direction that the reaction happened. Now we've got two arrows on our table. 
And all we're going to do is we're going to join the tails of these two arrows. So we draw in a line there that joins the tails. And look, we've got a Z on our table. Now, very important, the joining line has to go from tail to tail. It can't go to the heads of your arrows, otherwise this is not going to work. But as you see there, if you follow that, you end up with a Z on your table. So the rule is, if you follow this process and you end up with a Z on your table, you've got a spontaneous reaction. So this is an easy way to identify spontaneous reactions, and we sometimes just call it the Z rule. So now we've seen an easy way to deal with redox reactions and in order to identify whether they're spontaneous or non-spontaneous.